Hi, and welcome to our next broadcast, Will You Be Left Behind? This is the part four of this, this series, and uh, it's a very, very important uh, uh, series that we're covering because it is important that we know that we are ready for the second coming of Christ and for the, the rapture when Jesus comes. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just touching on the subject. Of course, you could go in and have a whole series probably for six weeks on the subject. But uh, um, before we enter into that, I just want to uh, share about Reignite. We're, we are having a Reignite uh, Holy Spirit Worship Night uh, coming up on uh, Friday, April 26th. That it will be in Orange City, Central Cristiano de Dios. It's uh, right, right there on the main, on the 1792 drag. And uh, we invite you to come uh, register on Eventbrite. There's the, the links are all over our Facebook page. Just if you, if you plan to come, please register so that we know the space is really limited. So uh, uh, we, we'd be excited if you could be a part of this. The goal of this night is really just to uh, have an, uh, the Holy Spirit, give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to minister to lives and without a lot of, um, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, um, controls put on him. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's many, many churches, it's very, very difficult uh, that for, for people to really open up to the Holy Spirit because there's, a, there, there, there's, there's a many things that have to, well, it's just not open. So anyway, this is an, an evening where you can come, you can uh, be receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We were going to pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that the gifts of the Spirit will be set free in your life, that signs and wonders will follow you, that uh, God will use you as a burning believer to shake this generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So come and be ready. We're going to show a short video right now about this. Uh, so I'll see you back. So welcome back to our series, Will You Be Left Behind? This is the fourth uh, sermon in this series. And uh, today we're going to uh, deal with just the, the, the fourth part of this. I, I'm just trying to dig into it. And some of it is repetition, but I'm always bringing in fresh perspectives. And uh, I just stick with me. Don't switch that, uh, that computer off. Just stay with me to the end of this. You will be blessed. Um, and, uh, but I want to read a scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 53. It says, For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we, we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on, it must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And of course, we have 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, which says that the Lord himself will descend um, uh, with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, the uh, with, and with the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up together with, uh, with him and meet them in the clouds in the air and we will be with Christ forever. Um, now, just get back to the basics. Why is Jesus coming back to take his church away? Why, why would God do that? Well, you have to understand that um, God is getting ready to judge this world for sin. Now, some people don't believe that, but hey, just read your Bible, read the Revelation, you'll see um, there's a, an extreme judgment coming to this world. Uh, sin uh, must be judged. And so it's going to be judged. And, um, but if you look in the Bible, every time uh, God was ready to judge a people, always he would take out his own, his beloved, his, the people that loved him and served him with all, all, all their hearts, he would take them out of harm's way. You see that in the story of Noah, 
where uh, Noah was told to build an ark and God saved his family uh, in above the waters, Shem, Ham and Japheth and, uh, they, and their families and the animals were saved in the ark from the judgment of God. Everybody else was destroyed. Uh, they groped in those waters and they died in those waters. It was the judgment of God. Uh, and and, and, and you, you see it also where in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, as, as uh, uh, God was getting ready to bring down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah for the sins of homosexuality, that's just one of them. Of course, there was, there was uh, just plain rebellion against God, blatant rebellion. Um, and, uh, and, and, and God uh, was bringing down his judgment. And what he did was he, he took Lot and his family out of Sodom. And if you read the scripture, the angels say, hurry up, get out. We cannot start before you guys are gone. So there, there, uh, God, God would not br allow judgment to start before his, his people were out of harm's way. And so that's, that's the whole thing that uh, to understand why the rapture will take place. It's, it's to the, the church of Jesus Christ will be taken away. And at that point, that's when the judgment of God will, will be released uh, on this world. And, and you have to understand that, that, that uh, of course, at that time, just to, uh, uh, just, just, just to understand the approximate way things are going to happen, Jesus will come. There will be the rapture. He'll take his church out. When the church is gone, there'll be nobody to intercede for for the people there'll be nobody to pray for governments there'll be nobody uh, to 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 bring godly influence at that time a wickedness will be unleashed leashed like this world has never seen before and you see it if you read the book of revelation the book of daniel um it's it's an incre it'll be a terrible time daniel talks about uh, two periods of three and a half years we don't know the exact uh, time that's going to be? Is it three and a half re real years or three and a half periods of times? Because uh, we, we just, we, uh, we assume that it's going to be three and a half years. There will be, there will probably be three and a half years of peace where the whole world will be in peace. There'll be a one world government. Uh, the Antichrist will be ruling and everybody will be so excited about the Antichrist because there's no more war. They will, they will worship him. They'll say, man, he's the greatest. And after three and a half years, then things will turn and they will turn so evil because the devil uh, never gives anything for free. If he gives three and a half years of world peace, he's, the world is going to pay for it and they're going to pay a hundred times. Uh, and that, that's, uh, if you try to get healing through witchcraft or you try to get, get uh, healing through, through a warlock or, or uh, um, uh, uh, you know, to, um, uh, hand readers and stuff like that, you might get a, 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 an answer to your current problem. But I tell you the truth, you'll pay a hundred times over because the devil never gives anything for free. And that's what's going to happen. The world is going to go into such a deep tribulation. Populations are going to be wiped out. There's going to be like a third of the earth wiped out overnight. If you read in the book of Revelation, you see how terrible terrible times come over this world and, uh, and uh, how, how the judgment of God will be unleashed. Uh, because, why? Because there's no church to pray. There's no church to hold back the tides. Uh, right now, where there's a church here that is holding back the tides and even the peace that you enjoy, that you think you have made, uh, they, you did not make them, it is because people are praying. It's because people are, are, are interceding. That's the only reason why we have any kind of peace at all right now. And that's, and that, and that, that is, uh, that, that once the church is gone, it'll be a terrible time. But um, when, after, after the, the time of tribulation, then uh, Jesus will come back. And this is the second coming of Christ. It's two different things. The rapture is where Jesus comes back for his church. We'll meet him in the air and we'll be taken away. Uh, we'll be with Christ. And then comes uh, the, the tribulation and after the tribulation, 
Jesus Christ will come back. And he says he will come back in the same way as he left. Every eye will see him. The world will melt because they will see God is real. He's, he's, he's coming back and he, and he will descend on the Mount of Olives. And it says the Mount of Olives will split in two. It will be uh, like a, a, a grand entry. Uh, and then Jesus will take over all uh, Poli uh, uh, poli the political world, he will take over rule and Satan will be bound for a thousand years uh, according to scripture. That means he can no longer influence people and people at that time will have to submit to God for a millennium, a thousand years. And during that time, uh, it will be a beautiful time where the Bible says the lion will lay, will, will lay down next to the lamb. Uh, the whole order of things will change. They will, uh, the, uh, the, uh, things will change completely uh, under the rule of Christ. And then at, uh, at the end of that millennium, uh, the, the devil will be and uh, let loose for a short time. He will, uh, everybody who wants to go, uh, you know, uh, uh, pledge allegiance to, the, to Satan can at that time. There will be many who do. And uh, then Jesus will come back and destroy the, the, devil, uh, the devil's army and everybody who rebelled with the devil will be taken and thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. That's hell. Uh, eternal punishment. There's no, um, there's no, it, it will go on forever and ever. Uh, eternal torment where the worm never dies. It, it will be a horrible place, terrible. And, um, the, uh, the, you know, you, even a drop of water will, will not, to, to, to quench the thirst, there'll be thirst, but no quenching of the thirst. There will be lust, no quenching of the lust. There will be, uh, uh, every evil thing will be there, but there will be no way to, uh, um, to fulfill the, the, the desires. It will be a terrible time. And, um, and, but the, uh, um, during that time, there will be the great white throne judgment where every man uh, will stand before the, the throne of God and give account of his life. You know, when I was a young guy, we always thought, you know, how, how can God uh, record every word? Uh, that we speak. How, how can it be that, you know, every, because it says, uh, every, there, God will judge us for every word that we've spoken. Even the secret of things will be, uh, will be spoken. We thought that seems so impossible. But in our day and age now, it is very, it's, it's so easy to understand that because you, you, can, you can see it with, with these phones right now, uh, it's listening to us the, the whole time. Um, we, uh, you, you, everything that you say can be recorded even if the thing is switched off. Uh, it, it's, I don't know how they do it, but uh, a, a lot of stuff, uh, we, we're in a time where uh, accountability, it seems like it's everywhere. And so, the, and, that's, and that's basically what it's gonna be like. But. Um, uh, just, just to give you the timelines, I uh, just stick with me on this. But, but the, the thing is, is that uh, the, uh, the trumpet will uh, will will sound, and who will Jesus take at the rapture? When the rapture takes place, this that's 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 the core of what we're talking about. Will you be left behind, and can you uh, can will you be a part of that? Um, uh, it says that that in in the Bible. Um, that those who have been washed with the blood of Jesus uh, will be uh, part, of, uh, part of Christ. And it says in, in uh, Revelation 19, 7 and 8, let us be glad and rejoice and give glory for the, for the marriage of, this, uh, of the Lamb has come and, uh, and His wife has made herself ready. And, uh, and to her it will be granted and arrayed fine linen, clean, bright, uh, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Now, I just want to distress that. Um, the right, the fine, the, the bride of Christ is made ready with uh, the righteous acts of the saints. And so you, there's, there's this false teaching that's going around that, you know, all you have to do is confess your sin and God will forgive you. 
and it's all about just being forgiven. Uh, but that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that our lives uh, must be transformed. It's not just this abstract thing where we're just forgiven for everything that we've done, but it's where God's power comes on our lives. It, for, it forgives our sins, but then enables us to be victorious over sin. Uh, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, conquerors over sin and over the works of the devil. So you, you have to, uh, true Christianity, and this is a key part, if you don't take anything else, please take this. Uh, true Christianity is where our lives are touched by God and we become victorious. That means we become conquerors of sin. We no longer sin. Uh, that's, that's the thing. And sure, sure, there's a, there's the, uh, uh, there's the growth in, um, in, in Christ and, and we go, you know, uh, uh, we're not going to be immediately spotless and, and have no sin in our lives. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that God gives us the power to overcome sin, to live in a world that is so sinful, where there's so much dirt and still be victorious, where you can go to bed every night and you can say, God, thank you. I was victorious today and uh, I'm so grateful, Lord. Uh, that's what God wants to do in our life. So when God saves us, He actually makes us that salvation. You know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not just uh, he's, he's, he's saving us and, and we're just forgiven, but it translates into real life. And that's the key. Uh, uh, salvation has to translate into real life. And, I, and you know, it, the Bible talks about this, and I just want to uh, talk about, you know, the, who will be left behind? Who are the people that will be left behind? Uh, the Bible talks uh, about the foolish and the wise virgins in Matthew verse, uh, chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. And um, the foolish ones being those that were, that were left behind. They, they, were, they did not make it into the wedding uh, feast. So basically you have this story. And uh, let's, let's read this story uh, in Matthew Matthew 25, um, starting at, at verse, verse 1, it says, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids, or virgins, who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. The other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Not a good idea. At midnight, they were aroused by a shout. Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bride bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the foolish ones asked the others, Please, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone out to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in to meet the, mari uh, uh, to meet the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, the other five bridesmaids returned. They stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or hour of my return. You see, you have this story of 10 uh, virgins, 10 bridesmaids that are waiting for the bridegroom to come. Uh, this, this great marriage feast, and they're, 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 they're waiting for it. And um, 
you have five of them that uh, that that are ready. They, they, they make sure they have extra oil. They, they prepare for whatever scenario is going to be coming. It, even if it takes a little bit longer, we're going to be ready. And the others, they don't, they're, they're not conscientious. They, they, just, they just bring enough, you know, just for now. And then they, get, they wake up at midnight and they said the bridegroom is coming because they didn't know when he's coming but all of a sudden he's coming and they realize hey our our lights are going out uh, we can't meet him with dead lights you know this was probably a requirement they had to have a burning light to be able to enter in and so they can't get oil so they can't get oil so they run off to buy some oil they run off to get things sorted out and while they're gone, the bridegroom comes and they get left behind. Even though they had waited for the bridegroom, they had actually been there with the others. They had every reason to be a part of it. The only, and the only thing that was wrong, they didn't have oil. But the consequences for this is incredible because you see, he says, um, uh, he said, they said, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. Believe me, I don't know you. And so they were uh, left outside and they could not come in. Can you imagine the devastation, the heartbreak that you're, you're standing there at the, at the door? The bride, the, you know, the, this, this is what has been the goal of your life. You know, I'm going to be with Jesus. And suddenly, you're outside and you can't go in. Man, it makes me shudder. I think that's the worst thing that could ever happen to a person, uh, being left out of the presence of God. And he says, so you too must keep watch, for you don't know the day or the hour of my return. Have enough oil. Now, oil is often uh, a, a picture of the, of the Holy Spirit, you know, having that vibrant relationship with God where no matter what happens, uh, you're going to be burning for God. You know, you're gonna, your flame is going to burn for God. Uh, uh, you, you need that. The only place to get that is to actually go and, 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 and have that vibrant relationship with God. But if you look at this, um, you know, why, why were the five foolish virgins not prepared? The truth of the matter is, is it's a picture of just outward Christianity, you know, where everything on the surface looks right. Uh, they were all virgins. Man, they qualified. They were all, they had kept themselves pure. Uh, man, uh, everything outwardly was right. You know, you can, you, can, you can be a virgin physically and be totally perverse in your spirit. Uh, are, you, are you getting me? Because you, you may be a virgin and never have committed uh, an act of adultery physically towards the outside, but in your heart and in your spirit, you, you have committed adultery and you've done all these things because Jesus says, if you look lustfully at a woman, uh, and the same goes with women looking at men, uh, you, you, have, uh, you've, you have committed adultery in your heart. It's the same thing. And you see, what Jesus is going at here is this, this, this surface Christianity where everything on the outside looks right. You go to church, you're part of the choir, you're, you know, you're, you, you spend, you go for prayer nights, you, you, you sacrifice, you do everything right. But in you, there's something going on that is not real. And of course, every one of us struggle for the victory and we have to overcome temptation. But it's this, it's this Christianity that is just a surface Christianity, that will never do. If you're 
if you're going that, if, the, if your walk with God is a surface walk, uh, you will be left behind. You know, you, can you imagine the tragedy of having God, you know, the, the women kept themselves as virgins. They, had, they were ready, they were waiting for, for uh, the bridegroom to come. They were with everybody, you know, they were excited, they were, this was the day, this was the marriage, this was what they had been preparing for, probably for, for months, you know, if you talk about a wedding, all the preparations that go into that, uh, uh, you know, meeting, getting the place, getting the food, getting everything ready, and here are the bridesmaids, they're waiting, and, and, and suddenly they realize they don't qualify, why? because they have not met the requirements. They don't have a flame. They don't have a flame. Uh, it's just a dead Christianity. And, and all of a sudden, they are left out. Man, it will be a terrible day. And you know, the Bible talks about the rapture. It says that two will be sleeping in a bed. One will be taken, the other left. Um, two will be working at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Uh, it will be a, a, a terrible day for, for many people that have had just a surface walk with God, where all it is is fulfilling the requirement. Okay, I'm a virgin uh, towards the outside. I've never had actually committed uh, a sexual adultery physically with somebody, but in your spirit, you've committed adultery many times. Uh, in your imagination, you're constantly committing adultery. Uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm not just talking about that, but I'm just uh, saying th that's one area. It can be uh, er honesty. The, it can be rebellion against God. It can be where everything on the surface looks right, but you're a hypocrite. You, you're not walking the walk. You're not real. You see, this is, God doesn't save us just to get rid of our sin, but He makes us real. He, when salvation makes us true believers, walkers with God, we are saved to the bone, not just skin deep. And this is the, the central part of the gospel. And you have to understand, those who will be left behind will be those who have just been focusing on surface issues. They have not dealt with sin in their lives. They have not overcome unforgiveness. It's just hidden. They smile real nice at their mom and they try to act real nice, but they have not forgiven their mother. Uh, they they, 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 they uh, smile real nice at their dad. Um, and, 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 they, and they tolerate them, but uh, uh, they can't stand being around them uh, and, and because they have not forgiven them. You see, this is what we're talking about. Christianity has to become real. That's what it's all about. When Jesus saves us, He saves us and makes us a new creation. And that's what, the, what God is looking for. So if you, the only way to prepare for the rapture and to be ready for the rapture is to be watch, watch, you know, watchful. Don't fall asleep spiritually. Keep the fire burning, the oil burning in your life and be real. It's got to be uh, uh, more than just the surface. It's got to be our whole lives. So I want to encourage you, lay everything at the altar of God. Give Jesus everything. That's what will make the difference. I'm going to pray right now. If, 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 uh, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I surrender all to you. I know you gave all for me. You died on the cross. You were beaten. You were, uh, you, your blood flowed down that cross. Lord, you, 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 uh, you were despised and rejected. You were laughed at. You were spit upon. Uh, people made fun of you, and you did that for me. So, Lord, right now, I surrender everything to you. I give you my thoughts. I give you my heart. I surrender all to you, and I pray, God, take my life. Use it to your glory. I make you my Lord, and I will walk and be obedient to you. I will 
make sure that your will will be done in my life for the rest of my life. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, log on to our website, www.citalife.com uh, 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 or .org. Um, and uh, just let us know. Just get in touch with us. Let us know what God has done in your life. Uh, and um, if you have any questions, get in touch with us. We, we want to be here for you. And uh, uh, we love you. Uh, live for Jesus. I look forward to the day where we have that meeting in the air where Jesus comes back. And I look forward to seeing you there. We'll talk about it. God bless you.